We're here with Tom O'Grady from Game Plan Creative and the former NBA creative director during the golden age of 1990s NBA jersey and branding design. Tom, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. So during the 90s, you had an opportunity to not necessarily redesign, but refresh one of the NBA's strongest brands in the New York Knicks. How does a refresh or a remix come about for a historic team like the New York Knicks? So a refresh happens typically when you have a new ownership group come in or you have a new CEO come in and they want to, you know, they want to change the color of the paint and the wallpapers in the offices, you know, yeah. and, uh, and they just felt it was time for a refresh. They've used that Knicks font with the circle be underneath it and Father Knickerbocker for a long time. Uh, and they, there was a lot of equity in it, you know, and so when we got the project, it was one of those assignments where it's like, you gotta, you gotta stay in the zip code, you know, you can't start, you know, traveling somewhere else or have a, a different place that you're moving to. You need to still make sure it feels like the Knicks, but this is like early nineties and black and silver are just like killing it. You know, everybody's into the Raiders, you know, yep. look and the LA Kings Chevy look, you know, with the Gretzky era and those things and the white Sox, you know, silver and black. And so they really came to us and said, can we add silver and black into our identity without making it a silver and black team, you know? And so that was a, that was a tightrope, you know, that we had to walk. And so we, we kind of made that more superhero type development look with the New York on top and the Knicks font that was just modernized. If you really look at it, it's not that dissimilar to the previous logo, but it's much newer and much more modern. And it, the, all, the whole idea was kind of have this looking up perspective on the font because that's what you do when you're in the middle of downtown Manhattan. Yeah, for sure. I looking up at all the buildings. The one piece that got pulled out at the last minute that still breaks my heart today was the Empire State Building was right in the center on top of it. So for all your listeners, if you ever want to just go to Google Michael Durrett Nick's uniform exploration, he was the designer that worked on that with me. Michael Durrett, D-O-R-E-T, and just look at some of his outtakes. Uh, we worked together really closely on that. And we were so close to having the Empire State Building peaking with the NY next to it. And then I think, I don't know if it's just like Paramount or somebody owned the building. And they're like, oh, we need a lot of money to keep it on there, you know, because we own the rights to the. And so then the lawyers got involved. The uh, what I call the NBA plague, which is the nothing but attorneys plague, you know, <laughs> kind of killed that. But. <laughs> we, we kept the New York font. We kept the same, you know, the type font from the current New York, the, you know, the 80s uh, New York font and the same numbers. And then we just added some side panels, black side panels, and we trimmed it with orange. I don't think, I mean, I don't think we had any silver at all on the uniform itself. It was just in the logo underneath some of the lettering and stuff. And then the silver and black were used on a lot of merchandise. So the Knicks started rolling out a lot of merchandise with black and silver with the Knicks orange and blue logo on top of it, you know. But they never they never went to a black uniform when I was there. They never went to a black alt. And we talked about it a lot. Like, I'm like, you know, like, when are we going to do the, you know, the black alternate uniform? Yep. And Dave Checkett and Pat Riley then left and they had some changes there. And so then they just stayed the course. They cleaned up the uniform. We did it a couple times where we narrowed the panels and we kind of fixed the pants. We did something a little bit nicer with the neck. And we just kind of tucked, you know, nipped and tucked it a little bit. And that was, I think, during the Alan Houston and uh, Charlie Ward years. That's a beautiful uniform. I, that's one of my favorite uniforms because it just brought everything together. We had a little NY subway token on the pant waistband and the nice like multicolored striping trim and that was a really handsome uniform that fit new york to me to a t yeah uh, and it still felt like the knicks you know um, that secondary logo i love to this day the little nyk subway token so guys your age don't take uh don't use subway tokens anymore but back <laughs> i guess in the glory days of new york back when the subway was really more popular than ever everybody would you know, just pop in a subway token and that's how they get around so that's that was brought to me i'm like you know, like somebody said, oh, we'd like to maybe consider the subway token, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, is that people like writing in subway? Oh yeah, it's like, okay. So then <laughs> Michael Durrett did that little subway token design for us. And I love that. that, that, that to me, they could have punched out a bunch of different ways. And I still see that hat sell a lot on, uh, yeah, on sure. that club and some of those other, other sites.